Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. Today I would like to tell you a little bit, just indicate, um, before we move to modern algebraic geometry, the history of all of this. Because it's, it's not as straightforward as it's presented in this lecture series, or if you ever seen a lecture on algebraic geometry. It kind of came out of kind of very different type of questions and observations and people were trying to sort everything out and algebraic geometry was, was born. That's essentially what it is. And one of these kind of classical surprises, I call it the cubic surprise, is the story about the 27 lines, which is like really, really popular, uh, really, really famous and kind of really surprising. And yeah, it opened kind of the, 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 the need to study algebraic geometry. Um, because people were looking for ways to prove a true observation. So let's have a look at it. Um, so here is a, a model of the so-called Klebsch-Klein surface, sometimes called Fermat surface. Uh, but anyway, the surface given by uh, this type of equation. And yeah, this is a high dimensional surface. This is just a model, so it's just a projection, whatever. And yeah, so there are plenty of them. And maybe in your mass institute, I remember when I was young, in my mass institute, we actually had one of them. So there were plenty of them. And I never understood what it is. <laughs> but anyway, that doesn't matter. Now I know what it is. And maybe in your, in your institute, they actually have it. Sometimes they have a collection. Um, so, and if they have one, you might want to look at it because it's kind of really nice. So it's kind of a strange type of surface. It looks a bit strange. Uh, I have some, uh, some, some much, much better pictures uh, later as we go ahead but anyway so a long time ago before people had a computer people were building these well, and yeah so we we're thinking about this really hard and what you can see here there's there's some lines on it right and there's some count of those lines a little bit strange so there's some lines and there's some count of those lines what are those yeah it's kind of really no people did that as I said um, a long long time ago and it's actually, yeah, so um, Klebsch and Klein, as far as I know, started thinking about this surface. And this is really around, in and around the origin of algebraic geometry. So this is like the 19, uh, sorry, 19, 19, the 1860s-ish, 1860s, 70s, uh, something like that, 1860s, 70s, something like that-ish, when people were looking at similar type of questions. So what you see here is a surface and you see lines on that surface, which is a bit surprising. You see that in an animation a little bit better uh, in a second. Yeah, so lines on the surface. So here is this beautiful uh, block of, of John Bias and the beautiful animation. I'll see it in a second a bit nicer of uh, Greg Egan. So here's our surface, exactly the same as before. Maybe I make it a little bit smaller so it fits on nicely on one page. And you can see those lines and it's very surprising that you can actually fit straight lines on such a curvy surface. So here this, this orange one just goes right through it. There's a nice picture down here. So here you can kind of see if it doesn't rotate, this one gets right through the middle and it's that's really a straight line. So here's another one. I, th I found this one really nice. So here's this red one here that goes all the way straight. So there's some certain number of straight lines on it. Yeah, and people were thinking about this type of surface and they realized that they're, okay, first of all, surprising observation, you can actually draw straight lines on that surface. Huh? It's a very curvy surface, so this is really surprising. Why would you be able to draw straight lines on them? But then you get also this funny number, so if you count them, so uh, let's get back. So here, people did that, as I said, before they had computer animation, which is really impressive, and then counted this line here that goes all the way through the surface, and then counted the number of them, and you get the surprising number of exactly 27 lines that fit on that surface. So it's not like there are infinitely many lines, that would be surprising because the surface is very curvy. It's not like there are zero lines, I'm already surprised that you can fit one of them on it. No, it's precisely 27 that you can fit on this. Um, and it's like, it's like, people got very excited about this. This is just really strange. First of all, 27 is a strange type of number. So 27 clearly indicates some symmetry uh, regarding to some threefold symmetry here. Yeah? And also that you can even fit one line on it is kind of really strange. And you can fit 27 lines on this funny surface. It's like really, I mean, people got really excited and they were trying to see 
the general pattern, the general proof, and questions of that type motivated essentially all of kind of modern algebraic geometry. In this case, more precisely, something we have seen, people essentially invented one of my favorite, one of the most important varieties that you will see, the Grassmannian, yeah, the, the K planes and N space for um, this purpose. More precisely, the way to find these lines, I'm not going to prove that, it's not difficult, but it certainly took people a long time. We're talking about people like Klebsch and Klein here. Well, they are, they are not known to be dumb. They're actually pretty smart, yeah? And yeah, anyway, so they, it's not trivial, but eventually what people developed is the Grassmannian, as you should think of like lines in three space, so three, one, but it's projectivized somewhat, so it's two, four, so everything is going up. Don't worry about it too much. So there is this Grassmannian 2, 4, and there are the Plucker coordinates that we discussed. And you can actually find the lines using the Plucker coordinates in the Grassmannian, and then it's just a matter of playing with matrices, and you can pull back the lines um, to the surface. So it essentially boils down to an equation count in the Grassmannian, and because the Grassmannian is something like a 2 by 4 matrix, and that's what it is, 2 by 4 matrix, that's 2, 4, and you can just count the number of equations and count the number of, uh, sorry, count the number of equations and count the number of variables and matches up perfectly. So you expect a finite number of solutions and you get this fantastic uh, answer of 27 uh, solutions to the problem, which is like ridiculous, it's just really fantastic. And people thought about it and yeah, developed the Grassmannian and whatever. And then you realize and you can actually do the Pluka coordinates for essentially everything. And then you get this, this fantastic statement that every cubic contains exactly 27 lines. So here's another one. This is, no, now, now this is really ridiculous, right? So we had this specific cubic, which is like a very curvy surface. At, at least I think that it contains one straight line is already surprising. And it contains exactly 27 lines. It's like a miracle. But now every cubic contains exactly 27 lines. It's just mind blowing. So people remarkably discovered this fact and this is like what was like the kickstart for algebraic geometry so any technique who could prove this kind of really completely mind-blowing fact um is would be very much appreciated and people developed essentially algebraic geometry or uh, parts of algebraic geometry i should be careful here parts of algebraic geometry from uh, just to solve questions of that type which nowadays people usually call enumerative combinatorics how many are there on yeah, how many lines fit on a cubic so the result is remarkable right the result does not depend on the cubic it's just always 27 ridiculous so you send the cubic via plucker coordinates in the grassmannian and do a count in the grassmannian that's what you can um can do and it's just it's remarkable it's just absolutely remarkable Something you might have seen again, so that's why we did all of this, like the, the last previous like 15 videos or something. You can also prove that, and Harshorn does it, um, gives a proof using this following fact. Uh, every smooth cubic is actually equivalent to P2, not isomorphic to P2, just is birationally equivalent, so where, you can, where you're allowed to divide, uh, so you don't have polynomial maps, but you have kind of rational maps in both directions and you can use this to show that every cubic is actually a blow up of p2 on two points so i don't have a nice picture of this this is just the, the blow ups we had before but essentially you can blow it up on six points instead of one point like here and yeah so the, then you can just pull back some nice things uh to the lines so the lines then correspond under this blow up so here uh you just pull them up right so just pull them up or pull, push them down as the opposite operation. Yeah, so the lines correspond to natural things. There are those six exceptional hypersurfaces people knew already. I haven't discussed them. Don't worry about them too much. But then there are some 15 and six. F 15 is six choose two. This is a lines through two of the points. Yeah, there are 15 of them, six choose two. And then there are conics through five of the points. And if you just pull them up into the blow up, then they will give you um, those those lines but anyway just just to make it clear again how remarkably the statement is kind of every cubic surface contains exactly 27 lines um, and you can prove that 
I showed you two different ways of doing it using the methods uh, from algebraic geometry and essentially algebraic geometry or parts of algebraic geometry was developed to address questions of that type. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.